Hello and welcome to the spiritguides.co.uk network radio show with your host Mark Chatterton. Today I would like to welcome on the show Scotsman Kyle Gray who has been dubbed the Angel Whisperer. Not only does Kyle see and talk with angels but he is also a gifted psychic medium who has helped many people through his readings. He is the author of two books, The Angel Whisperer and Angel Prayers, and I'm sure he's going to tell us something interesting, some interesting stories of his work with the angels and the spirit world. So a warm welcome to you, Kyle. Hey man, thank you so much for having me. Right, let's get started. Obviously, when you were very young, I think it's about age four, it all started for you then, and you spoke to your deceased nan, nana in your bedroom. Is that right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's all it's all started when I was four. My um, There was a run-up of events that really made that happen. Um, my mum's mum, my nana, lived with us in a family home in Port Glasgow. And it was really interesting because she had lymphoma cancer and all this different stuff going on. And she was limited to a wheelchair. And uh, around the same time, I also got this virus called Guillain-Barre where it attacks the, the, the nervous system and leaves you paralysed. So we were both in wheelchairs, and it was like this reflection of each other. And um, through this kind of wheelchair, we, we, we created this phenomenal bond. And uh, everywhere she went, I went with her, because my mum would put um, me on her lap and, and roll us around together, as I would say. And... Uh, I remember as my health started to naturally improve, my grandmother's actually declined and she was moved to hospital. And uh, one evening a neighbour called Margaret was looking out for me as my parents were with her at the hospital and I woke up to my grandmother tickling my back. Um, she was sitting on my bed and tickling my back. And uh, it turned out through the, the night that she'd actually passed away. So that was like my first spiritual experience, but I was completely unaware of it. Yeah. Um, I understand that you communicated with spirits from an early age, but it wasn't really until you were a teenager that you started seeing angels. Yeah, that was, that was more of a choice, uh, the angels thing. From early childhood, after that experience, I got highly sensitive and it was like, you know, I would walk down the street and I would, uh, I would, I would pat people's dogs that were not there, <laughs> <laughs> and I would, you know, I would do these weird things, and people were like, "What the heck is going on?" And you know, it, I didn't know anything other than what I could see. And then um, when I got to my teenage years, um, it was someone that gave me angel cards after I had gotten interested in crystals. And um, they gave me them for my birthday, and I, I get instantly obsessed with them. But I never even knew that I was psychic or had psychic potential, even from the experience I had had in my younger days. It was just, uh, I was just quite excited at the idea that there was angels out there, and I was desperate to see one. And obviously you, you did when, when you were 15. Yeah, when I was 15, it was, it was just a, a, a good couple of months after getting the deck, and uh, I really started to like push it. I would I, I learned how to um meditate and I uh, you know learned how to do all the basics like open your chakras and put on your psychic protection and I remember one night there was this invitation to a family friend's barbecue and my mum's friends were saying bring your cards and we can practice on everyone because they knew this this new it was more than that. Uh, it was more like a hobby and, and a party trick rather than you know, like a spiritual practice. And uh, I brought them, and after um, reading for someone, I, I, I seen their angel, which was was quite an interesting experience, to be honest. Yes, because I understand that some teachers say that babies and young children can see angels sort of as an everyday event, but as they grow older, they lose this ability. Would you agree that this happens? You know, I think there is a lot of... Um, very perceptive children out there and people but yeah I think it's when you're younger you're, you're more innocent there's no questions of the ego there's no conditioning that this is crazy madness insanity you know yeah so it was it's for children I think it's a much more easier process because it's just this whole process of trusting and and uh, believing what you see um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of kids out there that are very in touch. But obviously when you get to adults, there's very few 
adults who say they see angels. Why do you think this is? There's very few adults that what, sorry? That can see angels. Oh, can see angels? Yeah. I think that there's very few adults that can see angels because, you know, the whole idea of psychic phenomena, although it's becoming more accepted and uh, normal these days, I think for a long time it's always been shunned or looked at as craziness or... Um, or even scary, and, and, and I think as soon as you put some sort of fear-based emotion on a situation, you completely block it. It's just like closing it over. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what it is. Because I'll, the way this um, world works, I suppose, is a lot of people say, I'll not believe it until I see it. And, again, I think that's also a, a very um, closed-minded way of looking at it because not everything can be seen, can sometimes just be felt with your heart. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's why adults don't see angels is because it's, uh, again, a lack of trust. Do you think there'll be a time coming when adults will be able to see angels eventually? Well, I, I hope so. I think it would be amazing. I, I, I really do. I, I, I hope so. I, I'm not really a big predictor, to be honest, but I pray that day comes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So when you see an angel, can you describe what angels look like? Are they different or the same yeah they're, they're completely different you know I, i've i've seen so many different way uh, angels and with different looks and you know like this world there's so many different types of people and we all have different you know the way we come across and so yeah i've seen all different types of angels so the first time i ever seen an angel was the time at that barbecue and i was holding this guy's hands and uh could see this golden light behind him and it had two black eyes that completely stared into my being. And that's it looked like the movie Cocoon. That's the only way I could describe it to mm. you. Yeah. Um, but I've also since seen like my own guardian angel who is the complete double of Barack Obama. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've seen angels that look like normal people. Uh, um, and then I've seen just like flashes of light, glints, you know, children angels angels with wings angels without they've, they've always been different every time i've experienced them okay so if you've got a, a spiritually aware person who says they can hear angels and spirit guides guiding them is there any way in which you can distinguish between the two? Oh, you mean like a distinguish between a spirit guide and an angel yeah yeah how do you know the difference you know i i'll be really honest i've never really done the spirit guides thing um, you know, I've never really been so interested in spirit no. guides because I've always had the angels thing. Yeah, sure. But the way I always look at it is these beings work hand in hand. Um, but the way I always feel a spirit guide is generally some sort of being that's had an earthly experience, whereas angels haven't. Yeah. Um, I, I'll not forget, just only a few days ago, I'd done a reading for a, a lovely woman. She was Indian descent. And uh, I was reading for her and... When I was reading her, I, I seen this Indian woman behind her, but she was dressed in white, and she had like a white turban on, and she she was like um, she reminded me of I don't know you know that Gurumukh, the one of these a famous uh, Kundalini yogi yeah, from America, yeah. and I was like, there's this woman who is completely the double of of what I can describe as Gurumukh, except she's Indian, she's an all white, she's completely a devotional spirit, and she says that um, her grandmother was one of those people. And um, that she she absolutely de dedicated herself to to a yogic practice like that, and but it was really interesting because this woman had had uh, an arranged marriage and she wasn't happy with it and she was was going to break from it, and she had this fear, this worry that um, her family, both on earth and in heaven, would reject her for it, and it was an amazing experience because this woman came through not only to tell her that it was completely safe for her to, to change that, but to also be the spirit guide to her through that experience. And, and it, was, it was so amazing to see someone held by not only someone that was an ancestor, but also a spirit guide to them. Right. Because uh, I know that you've helped many people through giving readings and through your books, but there seems to be a lot of people out there who are suffering and hurting in the world yeah. Would, would you say that people choose to experience this suffering before they come down to earth or is it a type of karma or is it <laughs> something else? 
You know, that's, that's a really interesting question. I, I, I always like to say to people, to say that people don't choose to suffer because I think that's a really, it's a really, it's a strong place to be um, or a challenging place to be. But I think through the experiences we go through in life, sometimes that's, that's what we experience. But one of the things I'll always say to someone who's going through some sort of pain and suffering is that what they do with it is completely their choice. And that even though they might feel separate from a, a God or separate from a, a divinity or themselves or whatever, the true essence of their nature is completely whole. It is healed, it's not broken, it's not lost, it always will be there. And I think um, suffering ends when we remember that we are unconditional love. Yeah. So I, I think suffering is, a, is an earthly thing, it's definitely not something that will leave with us, um, but it's an opportunity to remember that we are love. Okay, um, connected with that, you, you get people who are sort of, obviously come see you who are worried about the future and what what their purpose is in life and so on. Yeah, you how, get that. How can people know what their purpose is in life? Would you say the angels are there to show people that? You know, I think um, we've all got a purpose in life. And I, and for a long time, and in my first book, I, I will throw my hands up and say that I, I let the purpose and career aspect of life get confused. But the way I look at it is um, your life purpose is to be happy. And your life purpose can um, be complemented by your career, but it's not defined as it. Right. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand that. So for me, my, I think my life purpose in many ways was to, for a long time, it was to get people connected to angels. And I, I do feel a lot of purpose with that, but I feel my true purpose is just to be happy and, and to be aligned with peace. I see, yeah. But doing what I do gives me that. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of complements it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, sure. Um, I was going to say that, obviously, a couple of years ago, there was this big sort of movement about the year 2012. Yeah. And, and obviously, that's been and gone. But would you say that there is something better for people to look forward to in the future? I, loved, I was so excited about the whole 2012 thing because... I knew that there was nothing going to happen yeah. <laughs> in a physical sense. Um, and, I'm, and sometimes I go, I don't even know if anything happened uh, on a, a shift or not. But um, my favourite kind of uh, date was 11-11. I thought that's when stuff really yeah. started yeah. to shift. Um, but 2012, you know, I, I think was just another milestone to mark that, that we are raising our consciousness again. Yeah, sure. Um, but... Absolutely, there's always something to look forward to. I think life is, even though there's challenging things going on in this world, there's always there's always amazing things going on as well. Yeah. So I always allow that to be more my focus. Um, I, I'm very um, interested in the climate right now. Yeah. And uh, obviously, a lot of stuff going on with oil and, and a lot of animal cruelty things have came up recently. I don't know if you've been aware of that. There's, there's so much stuff like out there that people are becoming aware of. Yeah, sure. So yeah. I think since maybe 11, 11 and 2012, even though there's, there's maybe not been a physical change or there's not been a big explosion or anything like that, I think there's a real shift in awareness. People are becoming more aware of the, the challenging or darker things that are happening in this world as a greater opportunity to change it. So, yeah, I think there's definitely more things to look forward to. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. interesting you said about 11, 11 because... That's a phenomenon that seems to happen to a lot of people where they see sort of consecutive numbers and yeah. dif different numbers come up. Would you say that's something to do with the angels or something completely different? I like to think so. I've got an 11-11 tattoo and a 22-22 a right. tattoo on my hands. As All my right. Angels. Yeah. Um, I just feel like, you know, when someone has this awareness that, um, you know, like eleven eleven is this the sign? Then the angels are absolutely going to use it to the best of their ability. Yeah. Um, so I was just in India all over over January, and uh, they'd never heard of the eleven eleven thing. Really? Yeah. And then all the boys on the ashram I had looking at their phones every time eleven eleven had came up. <laughs> <laughs> so it was quite funny. But, so yeah, I, I feel these numbers are just reminders that we're not not alone. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. 
Because another a phenomenon that keeps happening to a lot of people is they keep hearing this sort of sound in the background, like uh, drilling or humming when, when they're going the to sleep. The high pitch, the high pitch noise. Yeah, yeah, and some people have, have said they've even heard like a trumpet sound. I just wondered if you had anything to say about that. That is cool. I'd love to hear a trumpet. Yeah. Um, I get the high pitched ring, like the high pitched, uh, it's like a whistle. Um, I always call that a download. It's like something coming in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I believe that happens. I, I've I've known angels to to blow their trumpets or or to use signs to to remind us that they're there as well. So yeah. Yeah, sure. A trumpet was, if in my eyes, if ever I see a trumpet in a reading, it's always a sign of some sort of abundance or a great news coming to you. Right. So if you hear a trumpet, that's a good thing. Yeah. Because yeah. you you mentioned earlier that you you've just come back from India. Would you yeah. like to say? you know, what happened to you there? Because you were there for quite a few weeks, weren't you? Yeah, I went for four weeks. It was um, it was an amazing trip. Uh, definitely a lot of challenges for me. Um, I'm, I'm quite an outspoken person. Um, definitely someone that's got if, I've got... if I've got an opinion and I feel it's going to be of some benefit to someone, I'll, I'll generally share it. Yeah. So when I seen a lot of the, the kind of animal stuff, I'm, I'm a total vegetarian animal activist, so I seen a lot of animal cruelty, um, which was a very challenging thing for me because I I'd seen a dog dying and I seen a dog being hit with a stick at one point and, you know, just a lot of weird things happening. So it was, it was a very eye-opening experience for me. Um, but India was a beautiful place and... The most amazing thing about Indian culture for me was there was no denying that God exists. It was just a part of life. Yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, everywhere you go, there's temples or opportunities to bless yourself or or get connected again. So there was a, a real spiritual um, connection going on there. But there was also this, um, for me, I felt sometimes maybe a lack of... Uh, of compassion for for um, animals. That was my that was my hang up. Yeah, sure. Um, you've written two books to date: the Angel Whisperer, which is about your life story to date and how you've helped many people through readings, etc. Yeah. And then you've uh, written more recently Angel, Angel Prayers. Prayers. Um, could you just say a little bit about how Angel Prayers works? Then you know that's my. I've actually wrote three books now. All right. And so, but Angel Prayers just, just came out in, in the end of 2013. And uh, but it's, it, it was my absolute dream to create this book because um, I've always believed in the push idea, pray until something happens. I've always believed, you know, whenever anything's going on or there's a challenge, I always say to people, push, you know, pray until something happens. And uh, I, I, I've always prayed very differently. Um, so most people who speak to angels will always say, angels, please help me with this. And then you hope that the future again delivers the answer. But because I was uh, a student of Louise Hay and I believed in the power of affirmations, I felt like that when I was praying, saying please all the time, that it wasn't very affirmative. It was more asking and hoping. Whereas I decided to start saying thank you, angels, in the sense that whatever I had asked for had already been done or had been seen to or had been held or had been healed and uh, it started to really happen. <laughs> so I decided to write this book to help people shift their prayers away from fear and to harness this um, support that their angels have got for them through a more positive, affirmative prayer technique by saying thank you, angels. Uh, that's good. Because um, I know you, you've got two big events coming up in London in the next few weeks. I do. Could you, would you like to just say a little bit about those to the listeners? Yeah, I, I'm, it's quite cool because one of them is an angel number. So on the 22nd of February, 22, two, um, I'm doing Transition to Love um, in London with uh, Mind Body Spirit Festival hosting it alongside David Hamilton, um, who is, is one of my great friends. And... Uh, he um, he's a, a scientist that believes in angels. So that really, really excites me. <laughs> and and you guys, I'm sure I've I, I've listened to his podcast with you guys before. Yeah, yeah, because you know we interviewed him, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it on my iPad. I've listened to it running loads. So uh, yeah, 
Uh, but anyway, me and David, David Hamilton's going to be there, and also Lucinda Drayton, um, the voice of Bliss, who, and who's, a, who's pretty much an earth angel as far as I'm concerned. Right. And whereabouts is this help being held? I, I believe it's in Friends House, I think. That's yeah, the, the Friends Meeting House in Euston, which is right opposite Euston Station. I've never been before, yeah. but I've yeah, heard I've, it. Both Ian and I have been to several events there, and it's a really nice big building. Oh, good, that's good vibe. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited. And yeah. then I'm doing I Can Do It, Ignite, which is um, in March, um, alongside um, my complete heroes. Uh, Gab- Gabrielle Bernstein is one of my favourite people ever. Yeah. Her book was, was a, a real foundation for me. Um, and Robert Holden. And yeah. uh, I mean, that guy is just the best. Because you've got a little clip of you being interviewed by him, haven't you, on, on Yeah, I, I, he's pretty much been my coach the whole way through the whole journey of being an author. He's always kept me right. Yeah. So he has. He's, he's an amazing man, and he's the one thing I, I really love about him is he's always willing to share. Yeah. So whatever he's learned, he's going to share with you. And, and I think there's something, you know, amazing about that, you know. There's so many people out there that know all this information but don't want anyone else to know it. <laughs> Robert's got the opposite of that. He wants everyone to learn, everyone to share. Yeah. So, yeah, we're doing that. And uh, I'm not sure the venue, actually. That's terrible. But, yeah, it's the 8th and 9th of March in London. Yeah, well, we'll put it up on, on the um, website anyway. So. Well, thanks for letting us plug that. That's but it, it, Yeah, but it, you, you've got a website, which is kylegray.co.uk. I do, yeah. Right. So if the listeners want to find out more about, about you, they, they can look that up and... Um, let's get your books off there, etc. And um, yeah, and there's free meditations there for anyone to download right. and help yep. themselves to. Absolutely, get involved. Yeah. So one final question, obviously. Um, apart from these events in London, have you got anything else coming up for the rest of the year? Or well, yeah. Well, I'm going. I'm doing um, these London events. Then I'm going to Germany. I'm going to Switzerland. <laughs> I, um, I, as far as I'm aware, I'm going back to India. Um, so there's quite a lot of exciting things, I've, and my I've got another book coming out in May, yeah. and a, C, a CD program, right? And then my own angel card deck comes out in September. So it's going to be a, a really exciting year. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, you have to come and hang out. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to say thanks ever so much for agreeing to be interviewed to, today, and I'm sure everyone listening has, has learnt a lot about you and about angels and about the way forward, etc. and we thank you very much for that, Kyle. Well, I'm going to thank you because I feel you guys are doing great work in opening up this, this great channel to let people learn and connect with different ideas. So thank you for doing that as well.